Good morning, grade 12 learners. Welcome to the Life Sciences lesson. I am Miss Sibobo. I'm a subject advisor for Life Sciences in the Krisani East District. Before we begin this lesson, please make sure that your books and your pens are closer to you. The lesson for today is on the human ear, which is a sense organ for hearing and balance. Let us begin by looking at the content as per the exam guidelines. You are required to know the structure of the human ear and the functions of the different parts using a diagram. You also need to know the functioning of the human ear in hearing and balance. And lastly, the cause and the treatment of the following hearing defects, the middle ear infection and deafness. But for today, we are only taking the structure of the human ear and the functions of the different parts using a diagram. Let us look at the structure of the human ear. Your ear consists of three regions, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear is filled with A. The middle ear is also filled with A, whereas the inner ear is filled with the fluid. Let us then look closely at each of the parts per region, starting with the outer ear. Your outer ear is made up of the cartilaginous pinna and the auditory canal. The pinna is large and it projects slightly out of the head so as to trap and direct the sound waves through the auditory canal to the tympanic membrane. So the function of the pinna is to collect and direct the sound waves into the auditory canal. And the auditory canal conducts the sound waves to the tympanic membrane. That is a function of the auditory canal. It conducts the sound waves to the tympanic membrane. This canal, that is the auditory canal, is lined. It's lining. It has got some glands that secrete a waxy substance, which is called the cerumen. There are also hairs in this canal. The hairs, together with the cerumen, have got a protective function to your ear. They both prevent the entry of small organisms into your ear. So the rest of the ear is protected from the small organisms that may want to enter in it, is protected by the cerumen and the hairs which trap those small organisms, preventing them from moving into your ear. Again, the cerumen lubricates your tympanic membrane. So we say that it prevents the drying out of the tympanic membrane. This tympanic membrane marks the border between the outer ear and the middle ear. And so it is lubricated by the cerumen so that it can function properly. The cerumen must not be too much within this canal. It must not block this canal. It must not be attached and dry on top of that tympanic membrane so that your ear can function properly. 
Moving to the middle ear. Your middle ear is air filled and it occurs within the temporal bone of the skull. I said earlier that it begins with the tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane separates the outer ear from the middle ear. The other name for the tympanic membrane, the common name is it is the eardrum. So we call it the tympanic membrane or the tympana. Again, your middle ear is separated from the inner ear by two windows, the oval window and the round window. Both these windows have got membranes covering them. Then within the middle ear, there are three small bones. They are the smallest bones in your body. The first bone is attached to the tympanic membrane. And the last bone is attached to the oval window by its foot plate. These bones are given their names based on their shapes. The first bone looks like a hammer and is therefore called the hammer. That is its common name. The second bone, because it looks like an anvil, is commonly called the anvil. And the third bone, because it looks like the stirrup, it is commonly called the stirrup. These three bones have got their scientific names. The first one is called the malleus. The second bone has got a scientific name called the incus. And the third bone, its scientific name is called the stapes. So the three bones start with the malleus or hammer, followed by the incus or anvil, and the third one is called the stapes or the stirrup. Remember, whenever you have to use the names of these three bones, maybe you are describing a process and you decide to use the hammer the name hammer for the first bone, then for the remaining bones, you must also use the common names. But if for the first bone you use the malleus, then for the rest of the bones, you use the scientific names. These three bones are arranged from the largest to the smallest. Why? We are going to hear that when we deal with the functions of the bones. And they are surrounded by the A. If there is anything else around them, they won't be able to vibrate properly. As part of this middle ear, there is also a eustachian cube. Before I move to the eustachian tube, these three bones are collectively called the ossicles. That is the collective name for the hammer anvil stereo. Then moving to the eustachian tube, moving to the eustachian tube, Eustachian tube is also part of the middle ear. It connects your middle ear to the pharynx. There is this tube that connects your middle ear to the pharynx. What is its function? How does it work? The, the openings of this eustachian tube are normally 
closed. They are normally closed. They only open up when you swallow something or during yawning or during sneezing. And when they open up, they allow air into your middle ear and out of the middle ear. So you must know that the slit-like openings which are found in your throat area, the openings of the eustachian tube, are normally closed. They only open during swallowing, yawning, or sneezing. Why? To allow air into and out of this eustachian tube. Why is the air allowed in or out so as to equalize the pressure between this middle ear and the outer ear. The pressure in the middle ear must be equal to the pressure in the outer ear or it must be equal to the atmospheric pressure so that your hearing occurs properly. Otherwise, if the pressure between the middle ear and the outer ear is not equal, then you won't hear properly. When do we experience the changes in pressure? The examples of experiences where you will experience that the, the pressure in the outer ear is not equal to the pressure in the middle ear is when, for example, you are in an ascending or descending elevator or airplane. When you are in, a, in an ascending elevator, for instance, the ch changes in altitude result in the changes in the atmospheric pressure as well as the pressure in the outer ear. So if ever equal, unequal pressure is created between the outer and the middle ear, then you may experience some discomfort in the ear. Like for instance, if there is unequal pressure between the middle ear and the outer ear, what happens to the tympanic membrane? Your tympanic membrane stretches and that results in pain. So if you are flying up there in an airplane and you feel that there is something that is wrong in your ears, like you are hearing things far away, as if they are far away, and you are experiencing some sort of mild pain within your ear, then what do you do? You must swallow something or yawn. Because then the air will rush in and the pressure in the middle ear will be equalized with the pressure in the outer ear. Functions of the middle ear. Let's start with the tympanic membrane. What does it do? When the sound waves reach it, it vibrates, then it transmits the sound vibrations to the ossicles. And what are the functions of the ossicles? The ossicles transmit the vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the inner ear via this oval window. And the second function of these ossicles is because they are arranged from the largest to the smallest bone, they also intensify the vibrations. The sound vibrations are intensified or amplified by the ossicles. Remember, in the inner ear, there is a fluid there. And 
the movement of the sound waves across the fluid may not be as easy as the movement in the air. So these vibrations have to be intensified so that the sound can reach the receptors located within the inner ear. So the two functions of the ossicles is transmission of vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the inner ear. And the second one is that they amplify the vibrations. Functions of the eustachian tube. Your eustachian tube equalizes pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane by allowing air to enter in it. Then look at the size of the tympanic membrane. It has got a larger surface area if you compare it to the oval window. That facilitates in the amplification or it assists in the amplification of the sound. Because the vibrations are moving from a larger surface area, and they go and get concentrated in a smaller area in, of the oval window, that also helps in the amplification of the sound waves. So what is involved in the ampli amplification of the sound is the ossicles. They are arranged from the largest to the smallest. Secondly, the surface area of the tympanic Membrane is larger than that one of the oval window, and that makes the sound vibrations to be concentrated on a smaller surface, amplifying the vibrations. Then, function of the oval window is to transmit the vibrations to the inner ear. The round window. We say it's a pressure release valve. Why? Because this round window absorbs the pressure that is built up in the inner ear. It absorbs it and releases it into the middle ear. Then it will go out of the eustachian tube. So it makes or it, it, it reduces the pressure within the inner ear so that you can hear clearly. Otherwise, if this round window were, was to harden up and be unable to absorb the pressure, then you would hear an echo of sound. So in a way, the round window prevents the formation of the echo of sound within the inner ear. So we say that it absorbs the pressure that is created within the inner ear and releases it into the middle ear, making your hearing clear. It makes it proper. Then the inner ear. Your inner ear is fluid filled. I said that earlier on that the inner ear is fluid filled. It is made up of the bony structure as well as membranous structures. So we say that the inner ear is made up of the bony and the membranous tubes and the bag like structures or sacs. Then, where is the fluid in the middle ear? Within the bony part, I'm sorry, within the inner ear. Within the bony part of the inner ear, there is a fluid called the perilymph. Floating in the perilymph, there is a membranous inner ear. 
in this diagram is illustrated in blue. It, it floats within the perilymph. And inside the membranous inner ear, you get the endolymph. Then your inner ear consists of three parts. It has got the semicircular canals. In each ear, there are three semicircular canals. These semicircular canals are at right angles to each other so that they can detect the movements in all directions. Second part of the inner ear is the vestibule. This vestibule consists of the utriculus joined to the succulus. That is the second part of the, in, of the inner ear. And the last part of the inner ear is the cochlea, which is coiled. Why is it coiled? So that it can, the coiling enlarges the surface area for this cochlea to detect the stimulus. So there are receptors in this cochlea because the surface area is larger then the stimulus is detected over a large area. More about the functioning of the part will be dealt with in the next lesson. So this inner ear, if I may go through it again, so that you, it, you, you become very, it becomes clearer to you. The inner ear is made up of a bone which looks exactly like the membranous part of the inner ear. So there's a bony part of the inner ear and the membranous part of the inner ear. Then the bony part is on the outside. It is shaped exactly like this diagram. Within the bony part, there is the perilymph. Floating in the perilymph, you'll find the membranous inner ear shaped exactly like the bony part of the inner ear. And within the membranous part of the inner ear, what do you get? There is the endolymph. Now let us look at the semicircular canals. At the bottom of the semicircular canals, there are widened areas. Each widened area is called an ampulla. In plural, they are called the ampullae. Within these ampullae, there are receptors for balance. Again, within the utriculus and the circulus, you get other receptors for balance. And then in the cochlea, you get the receptors for hearing. So there are receptors at the base of the semicircular canals. They are for balance. They are to be discussed later in the next session. Then also within the utriculus and the circulus, there are other receptors for balance. Then in the cochlea, you get the receptors for hearing. Their names and how they work will be discussed in the next session. Let's look at the functions of the parts of the inner ear. The semicircular canals, the circulars and the utriculars, they are all concerned with balance and equilibrium. Then the cochlea is concerned with hearing. 
then arising from the receptors from the from the base of the semicircular canal and the utriculus from those receptors there are neurons that transmit impulses to the brain what type of neurons are they the neurons that transmit impulses from the receptors at the base of the semicircular canals and the receptors in the utriculus and the circulus those neurons that transmit impulses from the receptors to the brain they are called the sensory neurons so they are bundled together to form the branch of the auditory nerve so there is a nerve arising from the semicircular canals and the utriculus and circulus and that nerve transmits impulses to the cerebellum that's where balance and equilibrium is maintained then arising from the cochlea there is another branch of the auditory nerve that one goes straight to the part of the brain responsible for interpreting the sensations and that part of the brain is the cerebrum let us now consolidate all this work that we've done so far by looking at the ear in totality identifying the parts of the ear one by one and writing the functions please identify these parts quickly write them down in your books what is number 1 just use some form of a shorthand to write the function for number 1 what is number 2 quickly write the function for the part can you identify number 3 and write down the function Number 4 write down the function Number 5 identify number 5 and write down the function Do you still remember number 6 identify number 6 and write down the function for that part I'm sure you'll remember number 7. Identify and write the function. Number 8. Identify and write the function. Number 9. What is number 9? Identify and write the function. And your number 10. Identify and write the function let us consolidate or summarize what you've done so far number 1 is the tympanic membrane and it is responsible for transmitting the sound vibrations to the middle ear look at number 2 it is called the pinna it collects and directs the sound waves to the tympanic membrane number 3 is the auditory canal it transmits the sound waves to the tympanic membrane number 4 is the oval window which transmits the sound vibrations to the inner ear Number 5 is the round window. It absorbs the pressure from the inner ear. I'm sure you got number 6 right. It is the 
Eustachian tube, which equalizes the pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane. Show you got number seven, that's your cochlea, and it has got the receptors for hearing that convert the sound waves into impulses. So it's responsible for hearing. And then the auditory nerve transmits your impulses to the brain. Number nine is the semicircular canals, and they are responsible for balance. Lastly, the ossicles. They are responsible for transmitting the vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the inner ear. What is the second function of the ossicles? Surely you can still remember it. They amplify the vibrations. This summarizes your ear. You must be able to identify each and every part of the ear. That means you must know how each part is. And secondly, you must know its function. And then you must ask yourself certain questions related to the part, the functionality of the part. Like, for instance, if this round window was to harden, to become hard, would it be able to do its function? What if it hardens up? Would it be able to do its function? You must be able to answer those questions. What if this auditory nerve could have an infection and be unable to do its function? What will happen? So questions like these are, are being asked. They are asked in the examination. More about these types of questions will come up in the next lessons when you have dealt with the hearing and the balance. Let us then move to a few questions before we close our lesson. The diagram below represents the ear of humans. Look at it. The question reads as follows. Give the letter and the name of the part that, number A, collects and directs the sound waves into the auditory canal. Write that down. Number B, transmits impulses to the brain. Write down your answer. Number C, the letter and the name of the part that allows the pressure to equalize between the outer and the middle ear. Number D, write the letter and the name of the part that absorbs the sound waves to prevent an echo. And number E, write down the letter in the name of the part that has got the receptors for balance. I'm sure you are true by now. Let us mark ourselves. The letter of the part that collects and directs the sound waves is A. And the name is the pinna. Two marks. What transmits impulses to the brain? The letter is F and the name is the auditory nerve. What allows the pressure to equalize between the outer ear and the middle ear? The letter is G and the name is the Eustachian tube.
What absorbs the sound waves to prevent an echo? The letter is H, and that is the round window. What has got the receptors for balance? The letter is D, and the name is the semicircular canals. It becomes very painful when, when a learner, instead of writing the letter and the name, just writes the letters only or the names only. Please, grade 12 learners, read the questions thoroughly. At least you must read the question twice before you answer. And always look at the marks allocated for the question. Let us then move to the last two questions. They are also based on the same diagram. Identify the structures numbered C. Quickly write down the answer and state the function. State their function for three marks. The last question reads as follows. Explain the result if part G is blocked with mucus for four marks. Explain the result if part number G is blocked with mucus. What will be the result? We do the explanation for four marks. Just quickly write down your answers. Let us look at the answers starting with 1.1.2. Number C is the ossicles. One mark. For the two marks, you write the function. If you've written one function, then you are going to miss one mark. Two marks, that means two functions. The ossicle, they transmit the vibrations from the tympanic membrane to the inner ear. And they also amplify the vibrations. The last question. If number G is blocked with mucus, explain the result. You know that number G is the eustachian tube. Then if this eustachian tube is blocked with mucus, what will happen? Then the air will not be taken in. If the air cannot be taken in, that means the pressure here will not be equalized with the pressure on the external ear. Then if the pressure in the middle ear and in the external ear is unequal, then what happens? The tympanic membrane and the ossicles may not vibrate freely. And that leads to the tympanic membrane bursting and resulting in loss of hearing or deafness and pain. That brings us to the end of the lesson. Please fill in the worksheet that goes with this presentation. And make sure that you read your books. Read, practice answering many questions based on the topic that you've read. All the best, guys. Goodbye.